Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're going to be removing the cylinder head and doing an inspection on the white Wookiee. Next up in the Wookiee series, we're going to be removing the cylinder head. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm also going to show you how to remove cams and we're going to be doing an inspection on the cylinder head as well. We're also going to be taking a quick look at the engine block, but we're gonna save a full inspection for that down the road. I'm also going to be doing a Facebook Live video on top of shooting this video. So we're gonna kind of tag team this. I'll probably be answering some questions from the Facebook Live folks, so you guys will be able to experience that as well. Go ahead and jump over to the Humble Mechanic Facebook page and make sure that you like it. I like to do a live video about once a week where we talk about the Wookiee, I answer your questions, and we just kind of interact and have a really good time. So, awesome, check it out. With that, let's get to work. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the cams. Now the way the repair manual, first of all, before I get any further, if you guys are going this deep into a job, you really, really want the repair manual. Don't try and fly this blind. You wanna make sure that you're doing this the right way. This is internal engine work, basically. So we wanna make sure we're doing it the right way. What the repair manual says to do is to remove the outer two caps and then slowly remove the inner two caps. That's for this cam. For this cam, it's gonna be the outer two caps and then the center caps. Now, whenever I'm doing anything with cams or cam bearings or cam caps, I never just zip the bolts out. I like to kind of ease them out nice and slow. Even though it doesn't say to do this necessarily, I like to do it that way. Also, we don't need to worry about tension on the chain because our chain was messed up. If I were going back together with this, I would actually put marks on the chain and on the cam, I would also have this at TDC if I was going back together with this setup. Because the head's coming off, because it's gonna go to the machine shop, I'm not too worried about that. But uh, if, again, if I were putting this all together, then, um, then I would be marking it for sure. I'm not pulling the gear off. Uh, I don't really think I need to. We'll see if I'm wrong <laughs> on that or not. I'm not 100% sure we're doing cams either. So if I don't end up putting cams in it, there's no reason to take the gears off. I'm pretty sure those end bolts are going to be torqued to yield, so there's no reason to do that. I got my outer caps loose. Now it's time for the inner caps. So I'm going to do a, loosen this one a little, then loosen this one a little, then loosen this one a little, then loosen this one a little. You can do this by hand. I like to hit them with the, uh, the Milwaukee Impact. It's got pretty good control, so I'm not terribly concerned about zipping them all the way out and causing uneven tension on the camshaft. You can see the cam slowly lift up. All right, I got all my screws loose. I wanna make sure I stay very organized. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this uh, busted knuckle garage mat and I'm gonna lay it out on my bench and I'm gonna make sure that I keep everything in order. When I pull the cam off, I wanna make sure the nuts go in the same place. I wanna make sure that the bearing caps stay where they belong. These are nice because not only are they labeled, they're numbered, but they also have arrows on them to point in the proper direction so they can go back exactly the way they came from. We're also going to be doing a really thorough inspection of the cam as well as the lifters because I want to make sure that we don't end up with an issue. So I got these all nice and separated here. So just like I did with this cam, with the more forward cam, I'm going to take the outer ones out and then the center one, but I'm going to do it nice and slow that way I prevent uneven torque or awkward torque on the camshaft. Now, you also want to make sure that if you're doing this kind of job, you make sure that if this kind of stuff like these 
probably aren't really too worried about torque to yield, but if they're bolts, you want to make sure that they don't need to be replaced because a lot of times bolts that would hold cam ladders down or cam bearings down will be torqued to yield. Now this one didn't pop up quite as aggressive as the other cam did. So a lot of times what you can do, I'll take the rubber end of a hammer and I'll just give them a tap. That one's loose. That one's loose. I'm taking and setting these over on the bench in the same order that I pulled them off. When it comes to project cars, guys, staying organized is huge, huge, huge. Remember, this isn't going to be like I'm taking the parts off, I'm setting them on the bench, and I'm putting parts back on. This stuff is going to be sitting for a while, so we don't want to just pile up a whole pile of parts and then wonder where this stuff went. We want to make sure we're staying very neat and very organized. So I can just now walk the cam out. Here's our camshaft out. There's a little bit of wear on the lobes. It's not terrible. What is really a good telling sign too is low uh, wear on the lifters. If you see a lot of weird wear on the lifters, definitely want to replace those. And at that point, you're probably going to be putting cams in it too. We also want to do a thorough inspection of the bearing races right here as well. Let's take a look at our lifters. Odds are these are going to get replaced. So they don't really look too bad. You also want to inspect the bottom portion where the valve sits. You can see a little bit more wear there. Nothing horrible, nothing that makes me scream, oh my god, this engine is toast. Now I'm going to leave all those in where they were. And then what I want to do to make sure that I stay nice and organized I'm going to put all my cam caps back on. And I'm not going to tighten the bolts, sorry, tighten the nuts down too much. I'm just going to get them started. Odds are these will have to come back off when the head goes to the machine shop. I'm going to send the head to the machine shop to have them check it. I was a little concerned about overheating to make sure that it's straight. This is exactly the same as the AFP VR6. In fact, this engine is almost identical. The intake is different. The, uh, actually I think the exhaust is the same. Some of the hoses and piping might be a little bit different, but the main uh, engine, both cylinder head and block, I think are identical. They're just cups, there's no shim. It's all hydraulic. There's a lot of parts bolted to this head. A lot of them are gonna stay <laughs> uh, until I get it off of the car and onto the bench. So next up, we're going to remove this, this coolant hose back here. You guys may see me do this, like double tap it, triple tap it a couple of times. That's because remember, I'm shooting this video for uh, YouTube as well. Now I can be a little more aggressive with the coolant hose on this side. Don't want to be that aggressive with it on the other side, because the other side is the heater core. And I sure as hell don't want to have to replace a heater core if I don't have to. Luckily this one, that came off nice and easy. All right, so our cams are out. Our chain, chain is just dangling here on the other side. I don't really care about that at this point. I am gonna have to take this guide on the other side off. You can see it's just cracked right in half. Another piece of the guide. That didn't come out quite as happy, but I think we'll be okay. Here's the rest of that chain guide. Just like with the cam caps, I'm gonna just start these bolts back in. It's such a good strategy when you're doing big jobs like this. If there's anything you can put back where it came from, I highly recommend that. That prevents, well, I shouldn't say it prevents, but it really reduces the risk of putting something back in the wrong place. So these guides, this is another way I'm storing some of this stuff is in these plastic zip top bags. These guides are cheap plastic. This car had 140, had, <laughs> still has 140,000 miles on it, give or take. And she definitely didn't live the most well-maintained life. So over time they deteriorate and get really sad. Next I'm gonna take the fuel lines off. Yeah, I actually don't mind the uh, doing these chain jobs. 
I've only done, gosh, one or two or three maybe at the dealership. By the time I started in 04, most people weren't uh, bringing this kind of stuff into the dealership. Let's, hopefully we can salvage these. This is a metal fuel rail, so I'm not too worried about tearing it up or you know breaking it. Still want to be kind of careful with it. Also grab a pick. Picks are super handy, right? Just right up under the hose, but you want to be really, really careful not to jam it into the hose and risk punching a hole in the hose. So I'm gonna go nice and easy on this fuel rail. As this stretches out, you can actually see uh, they're worn a little bit. Now, if you still have trouble from right there and you can't get the hose out, Something that works really well is something like this WD-40 spray gel. Just get it in there, give it a little hit, and that'll, uh, that'll loosen it up a little bit. Got a little bit of fuel out, nothing too major. Another fun tip with hoses that are about the diameter of these fuel lines, if you take them, right, we don't necessarily want to leave this fuel line open. So I don't want to dump fuel everywhere. I'm going to tuck my rag under. This is the return fuel line. And the reason you know, so it's going to be kind of hard to see, but on the end of fuel return lines on Volkswagens, they have a blue mark and you can actually see a little blue paint. If you look really close right there, there's a little blue paint. When you see blue on a fuel line, that means it's the return side. Here's my other spark plug, right? I'm just going to plug this fuel line. It doesn't have to be super tight, just enough that if the line gets wiggly, I don't have to worry about fuel coming out of it. We have a fuel line retaining clip towards the back of the cylinder head that if I get lucky, it won't break. We got lucky, it didn't break. I wanna get these fuel lines out of the way as best we can. Another thing I wanna make sure that I do is I wanna take the spark plugs out. And the reason that I wanna take all of the spark plugs out is I don't wanna run into a situation where I'm ready to set the cylinder head down and the spark plugs are actually lower than the bottom of the head. So a couple of reasons that I'm pulling the head while I look for the, uh, the spark plug socket. I'm pulling the head because I actually am convinced that the head gasket was leaking. I was getting sort of a early morning phantom coolant leak. These gaskets were pretty common for leaking. These are actually like a fiber gasket that uh, the VR6s had. And it was really only the first gen stuff that had it. So I'm going to put a head gasket in it. It's going to get a Mark IV head gasket and get all nice and happy and fresh. If I were doing this as maintenance, I would be sure to try and clean the spark plug wells out and get any grime or gunk or anything like that out of the way. All right, spark plugs are just about out. Let's get this bolt off of the heat shield here. That's a 12 millimeter. I'm a little worried about some of these bolts at the back. So there's three bolts that hold the heat shield on. I already took one nut off. There's this one and then one facing the other way. They're pretty rusted, but I've been treating them. Let me show you guys what I've been treating them with. I've been treating it with this, this three-in-one uh, penetrating oil. The first one came out really easy. So I'm just hit them, hit them with a little more. Tried to get on some of the exhaust bolts as well with it and uh, pre-treat them. The more we pre-treat, the, uh, the better off we are. I usually prefer to impact when I have really rusted hardware. It's that jolt that seems to perform better than just like the straight torque because the straight torque can typically stretch it, whatever you're working on. So the stretch, the stretch can be a bad, bad thing that can lead to the break. Uh, this would be a good opportunity for the, uh, my snap-on quarter-inch electric ratchet, which is pretty jam. All right, right, one part at a time. Our heat shield's off. Let me show you guys what I've been doing to try and stay organized. I know I've beaten up the organization thing a little bit, but man, it's just so, so, so important. 
as well as we know these cars, it's really easy to get in a position where you're like, oh no, man, I'll remember where this goes. And you come back, well, you know, a month later, two months later, and uh, you're like, where the hell did this piece go? So what I've been doing is I'm taking the nuts, bolts, and hardware, putting them with the component, and either zip tying them on, taping them on, some way, shape, or form securing them so that they don't get lost, don't get misplaced. I don't forget where they went. So just a little tape. Try and find a clean surface. Boom. Now we know exactly where they came from. I'm gonna hit this exhaust manifold with some of this penetrating oil and try and pre-soak it. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of parts, a lot of pieces. We have the cams off. We have obviously the chains off on this side. Uh, serpentine belt tensioner is off. I decided to go ahead and leave the intake manifold on. I'll leave the alternator on. Hopefully that's not a mistake. It looks like it's all bolted to the bracket, which is bolted to the block. Next up is going to be removing either the exhaust or taking the headers uh, or exhaust manifolds off. After that, it's pretty much pull the bolts for the head. This is one of those jobs that it's like, yeah, no problem, I can do removing a head and then you get to it and you're like, dude, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. All data, Michael's okay. It's not amazing or anything like that. It's fine. I know that's not a ton of help, but it's just fine. So I'm gonna try and leave the manifolds on. It's gonna be challenging getting to the bottom ones. This is all depending on the bolts at the flanges, at the manifolds coming off okay. But yeah, if I were, if I were at the shop, say, and uh, it was, you know, game time, I would, I would be really close to being done. In addition to that, I also wouldn't be using a ton of hand tools. I would be more likely using all power tools, especially, uh, you know, if I were at the shop, because I would have all that at my disposal. I'd be using an air ratchet right here. I wouldn't be doing this nonsense by hand. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, rolling by hand, but when you're working on flat rate, you gotta go, you gotta go fast. You gotta go accurate. Accurate's way more, way more important, but you gotta go fast when you're on flat rate, otherwise you're not gonna win the flat rate game. You know, doing it slow is slow. Doing it twice takes even longer. Something to be mindful for my fellow technicians out there. I'm all about working fast. I'm all about hustle. All about it, right? Very little will cost you more than having to do a job a second time. Taking five minutes to read something takes five minutes. Having to redo a job a second time, unknown amount of time. And you'll also notice that I'm kind of bouncing, bouncing around with different tools. A lot of what I'm using really depends on the clearance that I have. So I'll you know, break something loose with a bigger ratchet or wrench. Once it's loose, then I'll go with something smaller, maybe, where I have a little bit more rotation. Sometimes I'm using the box end, sometimes I'm using the open end. That I decide based on how much torque it's taking to, do the, to move the fastener. If it's taking a lot of torque, I want to be on the closed end. If it's a little bit of torque and it's you know, fairly easy, I don't mind going on the open end because I can actually turn it faster um, on the open end. We don't work on a ton of VRs anymore. It's a pretty limited, limited thing in most of our cars now. Toregs, Passat, CC. I think that's actually it. So this is the third nut on the driver's side exhaust manifold. Here's the third nut on the driver's side exhaust bank. All right, we're about two turns away from having this damn thing off. Here we go. I'm also trying to hold the manifold up a little bit or the downpipe up a little bit so that there's no pressure on it. All right, now that we have the six nuts off of the downpipe for the exhaust, the exhaust is actually loose. We're gonna leave the intake manifold, the lower manifold on the vehicle. Next step, and really one of the final steps is going to be removing the cylinder head bolts. 
Now, like I've mentioned before throughout the video, you want to have your repair manual in order to follow the proper procedure for taking the bolts out. If you take the bolts loose in the wrong order, it can actually cause the head to distort and cause damage. This head's going to the machine shop anyway, so I'm not super concerned about it, but that is something you want to make sure that you follow whenever you're taking any cylinder head off of a vehicle. If it's got an aluminum block, you better dang well make sure that you do it in the right order. Another really good tip, whenever you're working with any kind of fastener, especially on something that's this important, you wanna make sure that the tool is all the way down in the fastener. In fact, you don't need to go to town and really wail on it, but giving it a little tap never hurt. Another thing we wanna really make sure we're paying attention to is that some of the cylinder head bolts are really easy to access. Other cylinder head bolts on this car aren't so easy to access. You may in fact need a long extension in order to get the tool down low enough to remove the bolt. If you are concerned about debris inside of any of the bolts, a pick to clean it out and either compressed air or a little brake clean can really help with that. One other thing I'll say before you guys start taking a cylinder head off or anything big job like that, make sure you have somewhere to put it. <laughs> Don't get yourself in a situation where it's time to take the cylinder head off and you, uh, you take it off and you're like fumbling and stumbling around trying to figure out where the hell to set it. The, having somewhere to put it down is really, really important. Also, you know, we don't want to hurt our back. We also don't want to like grab it by the fuel rail or like buy this vacuum line right here or do something stupid like that. And for the fasteners that might have oil in them, a little brake clean and a rag will help get that out of there. Make sure you guys are wearing eye protection if you're doing stuff like this. It's kind of stupid not to. Like I've said a hundred times, make sure that you take these loose in the proper order. You also don't need to take them all, all the way out at once. You can loosen it, loosen it, loosen it, loosen it. Typically, when loosening, you go from the outside in, but before you start, make sure you follow the repair procedure on your specific vehicle. Also, these are gonna be ultra tight. So I'm gonna work my way around. Ooh, that one's kind of nasty. Go in the corners first. Looks like we will need to move this bracket out of the way. I'm gonna leave it on there, just loosen it up in order to get it out of the way so I can gain access to that fastener. If you don't need an extension, I don't generally put an extension on it. Any length you add, adds for the potential to rock the fastener and we don't want to do that. But you also want to make sure that you're not going to bust your knuckle open anywhere when the ratchet slips. This is kind of extension overkill, but you do need that for the lower bolts. As you guys can see, these are pretty dang tight. Like I mentioned a minute ago, it's a good idea to clean any debris out of the cylinder head bolts. Well, I actually have one at the back that's completely full. I couldn't even come close to getting the tool in. But because of the angle, I can't get a pick, so I'm going to take a small screwdriver and I'm gonna get all the debris out. It's like a dead bug in there or something. Oh, there we go. It's like a rock inside of there. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of brake clean just to get any remaining debris out. Now we should be good to go. All right, I'm just going back through and seeing what, seeing if I missed any. I know I have one or two more. 
All right, I think I actually just have two more. So that should be all of them loose. Oh, maybe one more. Did that spark? Did you guys see that spark? That was cool. Now that we have all of the bolts loose, it's time to just go ahead and take them out. This is a good opportunity for something like an impact driver. This is a couple of different length bolts. These are some of the shorter length bolts. All of these bolts are going to be replaced, so I'm not worried about getting them back where they came from. And once we've broken them loose, there's really no need to worry about the order in which we're taking them out. That's purely when we break torque loose. We can actually just zip these out, which will be a lot faster and a lot more fun. Here's an example of some of the different lengths of bolts that come on the VR6 cylinder head. These are torque to yield bolts and they will be replaced. So another quick tip, when you're doing these and they may have oil on them, don't just put the gun in and go full throttle. You'll spin oil everywhere. Take it nice and slow or use your hand to cover it so you don't get oil in your face. Of course, we're wearing our safety protection so we don't really need to worry about that, right? Even though these bolts aren't gonna be reused, I'm gonna save them. These bolts actually make great punches. We're at the point now where I'm pretty sure I got all the stuff out, right? I'm gonna do just a kind of a couple more checks, make sure that there's nothing that's gonna get hung, no connectors, everything is clear. I can probably lift up on it. So one thing I, I see that I forgot is actually the dipstick funnel. We wanna make sure we take the dipstick funnel out. That's a number five Allen, I believe. That was definitely what was hanging. In fact, while we're here, we can just go ahead and pull the dipstick funnel out altogether. Now it's time again, do another inspection. Lift up on it a little. Make sure we don't have anything connected anywhere on the cylinder head. No electrical connectors. That's the big one that people miss, electrical connectors. Nothing in the front. In fact, I'm remembering that there's three connectors that hold uh, attached to the um, oil filter housing, so we want to remove those. Let's see, I'll set, see these are the wires that I just disconnected, and just for fun, tuck them in there. I'm doing a visual inspection down towards the bottom end, just to make sure we're not going to catch anything. Now, this is not the heaviest cylinder head in the world, but it's also not very light either. So, be really careful when you're lifting these kind of things. No need to be dumb and hurt our back. In fact, I got a guy out right now with a hurt back. So guys, please, 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 one more time, please be careful. All right, with everything loose, it's time to take the cylinder head and pick it up. If you have someone available to help you, this is a really good time to grab them and get their help. Since I'm flying solo tonight, well, I'm flying solo. We want to ease the cylinder head up. We don't want to just rip it, right? If we just jerk on it, we run the risk of hurting ourselves. Or, and if something's hung, it's not going to be fun. All right, so we're loose. It's definitely heavy. <laughs> nothing, nothing is hung. It's time to take it and put it on the bench. Let's try not to break our plastic tab. Make sure we're not going to smash our fingers. There it is, kids. There it is. All right, so with the cylinder head off, we're looking at what's gonna be the most important part of the cylinder head. This is where the head mates to the block. As you can see, we have some gasket material left over from what's still on the block. The head gasket is right now still on the block. It doesn't look awesome. It's uh, got some spots that are a little uncomfortable for me. You can see some deposit buildup right here on the valve. One area of concern is right here. This looks like it might just be gasket material. 
and I'm really hoping that is all just gasket material. You can see I took a scraper to see if that was just gasket material, and it really does appear to be that way. I won't know for sure until I get it cleaned and put a straight edge on it to make sure that that's not gonna be a problem. As we move down the head, you can see a couple more spots right here that may be of a concern. Right here may be a concern. We got some spotting on this valve. I think by and large, all of that stuff's gonna be okay. I think it should clean off pretty well. This is going to be hot tanked. It's going to be checked for straightness. It's going to have a valve job. The valve guides and seals are gonna be replaced. And that's gonna be good because if we come up here to the top, we can see how much rust and nasty debris was in the cooling system. The top side of the cylinder head looks pretty good. On the top side, we did a pretty good inspection already. We can see our lifters don't really look all that bad. There's a tiny bit of marking on it, but nothing that I'm actually that worried about. I'm pretty sure though, we're gonna go ahead and replace these anyway. This is sort of a while you're in there type repair. Also going to be looking at replacing the valve springs as well. We also wanna make sure that we do a really good inspection on the cam bearings. You can see a little bit of scoring on the bearings, but that's really not all that bad. What I like to do is I like to take my finger, nail, and run it perpendicular to where the scratches are. And if I can feel the groove with my nail, then we need to do something about it. If I can't feel the groove with my nail, it's probably going to be okay. But of course, we're definitely gonna make sure we check each and every one. Even though I'm pretty sure we're going to replace the lifters, it's always a good idea to pull them off and do a full inspection, make sure we don't have any that are collapsed or have any damage on the inside of it as well. This is also a really good opportunity to look at the tops of the valves, look at the keepers, and look at the plate at the top and make sure there's no issue there either.